Hi, you're welcome back to this channel. You're welcome to another session where we have a quick chat and we just ha also reflect on the word of God and also on the journey of a Christian life. In this session, it's going to be brief, hopefully, and um, I just want to continue where I stopped the last time. And if you have not listened to the earlier part of this um, broadcast, I want to encourage you to subscribe to this channel and you'll be able to see the previous um, session. I'm still going to be continuing on the lessons from an accident. Lessons from an accident. I think as human beings, as especially children of God, everything that happened to us, I think it's for a purpose. And everything that happened to us, whether good, bad or ugly, I think it is good and it is wise of us to actually sit still and reflect on is it okay, what has gone wrong, what is, you know, is, are there lessons for me to learn from this, this, this situation, this circumstance that I'm going through or this experience that I have gone through and that's exactly what I did. And in the earlier broadcast I shared with you, it's about the accident of um, someone that's very close to me and is actually my son. And uh, he had an ex, um, a, a head injury that he had a short, short memory loss, I would say. And you know, it jolted me because it made me realize that there are quite a number of things we take for granted, we focus more on the things we do not have, we do not appreciate, take it stock of the things we have and appreciate God. And Psalm 103 is a good place I will encourage you to go and start to look at. Every verse of that scripture gives us reasons why we should be thankful, why we should be grateful to God because most of the time, we find ourselves complaining and dwelling on the things we do not have and the things we have we don't appreciate God so I'm going to be continuing the lessons we've treated with I talked about three lessons that I learned from that accident and number four lesson is acknowledge a problem and a situation you can handle we need to get to a point in life that when we have a situation we know it's actually beyond your handling or my handling we need to be true to ourselves and acknowledge that i can handle this my son then he had that memory loss but i could see that he was struggling with the fact that no this cannot stay yes i appreciate the fact that he he, he wanted to go to his normal normal states as soon as possible but there are some things you can help. This was we were talking about short memory loss. There was nothing he could do. He was straining himself. I could see him physically, even from his eyes, you would know that he was trying to. And when I asked him, he would say, Oh, I'm trying to remember what happened, you know, that led to this. I said, Don't force it. There are some things in our lives that we do not need to force. God wants us to enjoy that process enjoy that process and maybe it's a time to really reflect on the time that you have gone into those matches now talking to my son the time you've gone into the games and you came back and maybe your team lost but rather than you to be thankful that all members of your team went and came back and everybody were intact even though you guys were in a soul mode you guys started talking about beating yourself up i'm not saying physical beating beating yourself up because you did not win the game are there games of life that you're playing that you're not winning at now i don't know what that game is but acknowledge it and give it to the one that is more than able and number five also is move forward when you know you cannot help it move forward don't sit still don't be the type of person that oh all you are now going to be nursing from morning to morning evening is the problem move on lesson i learned from that boy that even though as much as he was trying to 
really remember trying to put himself back so that he could convince us that he was normal and we could we would not stop him from going back to the game after that match he had actually given his word to go to another event it's a boys brigade event which they had an opening day somewhere and it was one of those volunteers that were supposed to be there and he insisted that he was still going there i will you know i was telling this boy that you it's obvious you, you are not fit if they are telling me i should come and pick you to go back home because they are not sure whether you you'll be able to make your way back home on your own how how, how can you tell me that you're fit to go to another event? But he kept on telling me, oh, I've given my word and I needed to be there. I want to be there. I'm like, okay, yes, I agreed to take him there. But I just, I told him, you're, we are actually going there just to go and explain to them the reason why you cannot stay. You are not going to stay. He tried all possible reasons in the book to convince me that he could stay. He could stay, that it was fine and all that. He said, I'm not willing to go to, st to stay with you. And it would be irresponsible of me as a mother to leave you, especially when your coach had told me your health state. I'm not going to actually allow that. So move forward. He moved. He kind of, the way I see it is that he moved forward. He tried to move forward that, okay, yes, I can't do anything about this now, but let me just continue with my life and he was thinking of the next thing he, he wanted to do number the next one which would be number five is honor your word honor your word maybe that's what i should have used that example but no because he had because he had given his word he said we needed to go back he needed to go back we needed to go back and we went back and they did they did appreciate that in him because for them that's one of the things they're trying to develop in those young boys and girls that were in boys brigade and they were like okay yes you know it's like you give your word and you want to actually stand by your word and they actually did appreciate that and uh, we moved on anyway after that and the next point i would say the next lesson that i learned from the which is number seven lesson is that accept losses that are inevitable we went to the boys brigade event, we couldn't stay because I couldn't leave him, I couldn't, there's no way I can make myself leave him even though he wanted to stay and all that. But at that point you had to accept the fact that you know, whatever argument you are putting forward is a lost one, I am not going to allow you, you are not going to stay with this event. And with us too, when there are things that happen that you know that decision could have been made on your behalf or could have been made concerning you and it appears like it's like a loss, how are we handling it? Why not accept some those losses and just move on? The things that are inevitable, I mean here, please accept and move on. And number eight, put losses behind so that you can have fresh perspective. If you don't, yes, you've accepted the losses. That's number eight. You've accepted the losses. But it is important that you don't stay glued with the losses and see yourself as the loss or the failure. No, you're not a failure. You're not a loss. But you're putting it back behind you so that you can have fresh perspective of the next step that you need to take. Your next step you need to take, you need to have that fresh perspective. So put those losses behind you. And number nine, you need a lesson that I learned from that is courage. You know, I could, I was, I admire the courage that I saw this boy ex exhibit. You know, and it makes me realize that even at in the face of what should be one should be panicking and all that, you know, because if it was not courage for him to persist till the end of the match and he was fine with it and courage, even if the court, he didn't want the coach to actually call us to come and pick him because he knew what that meant for him, that we might as parents and it's natural, you, you care for your child or your word as guardian, uh, you don't want to expose your child to 
the risk of danger continuously and you if you think a particular spot is exposing him to that all the time you might not be you might not be able to handle it and he was seeing that that bit but he was courageous enough to go through it you courage we need it's interesting the way we all want to have courage without going through things that are fearful things that are threatening us things that are Sh that would shake us, that would shake our belief system, that would shake her values, and yet we, that's the only time you you ex that you, you can show courage. Look at the, the story of David and Goliath that had been, you know, told to us several times. You know, if David did not have courage, would he have been able to face Goliath? We, I just need us to know that courage is a tool that you need when you face fiery situation, situations that seems overwhelming, situation that seems to you and I that ah, is this thing going to overcome me? That does not mean that we will conquer, but you need courage to face that your enemy. You need courage to face that situation. That things that seems to be challenging and be lingering. Is it your studies? Is it your exam? Is it an examination that you've been lingering on? You need courage to say, I'm going to take the bull back the home. That was what David did. He said, who, was, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that is called Goliath? He was not looking at his height. He was not looking at the intimidating speech that he had made that is, that is making all the, all the soldiers of the children of Israel to, to, to be afraid that he was advancing. He, wasn't, he did not consider all that. He, he put on the tool of courage. And when we are facing adversity, that is exactly what we need and finally the last one i just want to it's not a lesson it's just a, a thought about life life is given to be lived to make impact i learned that from that boy's experience our accident it wasn't particular about himself it was particular about the things he needed to do even for the next event when life happens to you, how do you respond? Do you respond like how? Do you respond like the egg? Or do you respond like that tea bag? I know there's a previous broadcast, I think I've talked about it. Life happens to all of us all. But as a child of God, He expects us to respond like the tea bag. Why the tea bag? Hot water happens to these three products that I'm, I've told you the carrot, the egg, and the tea bag. It turns the carrot to a soft carrot. The carrot becomes very soft. You know, when life happens to some of us, we now become so timid, we become so weak, we become so fearful that we are afraid to even make any attempt. We are afraid to try any other thing again. That's the life of a person. And that's not what God wants for you and I. When life happens to some people, they become like the egg. When the egg is, when hot water is introduced into that egg, it becomes hard. You turn so hard, you are not so insensitive to everybody's feeling. You are so insensitive to what is happening around you. And because you are so hard, you cannot retain any moisture again. Even when people are, when God is throwing good things at you, people are going through, you can't identify it because you've allowed life's happiness, life's situation to harden you. That all you do is maybe all complain. You're so, you, you're so rude, you're so harsh to people. All you think about is me, I, and myself. If you are a child of God, that is not the right response. The right response God expects from you and I is that of the tea bag. The tea bag, when the hot water, the boiling water goes into it, the tea water turns the boiling water into a tea that you use. Till I come your way next time, be that tea bag as life is happening to you. God bless and my name is still at the God bless you.
Bye. I'll see you next time.